So you want to rank higher on Google. You want your website to have tens of thousands of views a month. And I get that because if you can accomplish that, right, you're going to make a lot of money. Well, welcome to this video. This is part two of a series where I'm going to use Brian Dean's SEO strategy to build awesome content that attracts backlinks. And if you haven't watched part one of this series, I have a link in the description. You can pause this video, jump over there. I go in depth of how he has ranked Backlinko, how he sold Backlinko to SEMrush for presumably millions and millions of dollars. And now he's doing it again with a new project. Now the website we are going to work on is my website, How Widely Spoken. We're going to go into things such as the Google Search Console data, and we're going to look at, you know, the behind the scenes view. Currently, this website has what, 82 posts. And it is getting, what is this? Let's go to performance. Let's check out this website. Boom, total clicks. It's getting about, what, what is this? 163, 191 clicks per day. Let's use this experimental website as the basis. Let's build an awesome blog post that attracts backlinks right now. Now to quickly review part one, we were able to get these beautiful graphs based upon real data. Listen, we have a blog post potentially about Iceland. Look at this. I'm going to show you one that's awesome. Generosity comparison. We have Iceland, Netherlands, Germany, and so on and so forth. Based upon an Excel data sheet that was free for us, we imported it to ChatGPT, and now we're going to be able to use it for a blog. We can use these right here, save image as. Like, we can use these, but we need to go a step further. So to begin, let's put the happiest countries in the world. Let's not put a suffix on there. Let's see what this does for us. So right off the bat, we'll see Google has snippets that they're answering this question for us. But if we go a step further, we see here this website, which I don't recognize, World Population Review, right? They have the first spot in organic search. And let's see what they're doing. Let's see how big this article is and let's see what they're providing. All right, they have a pretty cool graph and we're gonna be able to do graphs too. Now this article, let's go up a bit. This is really cool too. This article here is able to attract backlinks. It's the number one spot. And as you can see, this website, yes, it's powerful. And that one blog post potentially gets 30,000, almost 30,000 traffic per month, one blog post. That's why this tactic is worth it. Now let's go to organic keywords. Let's see what it's ranking for. We're gonna come back to his happiest countries in the world, happy, uh, happiness index country. We're gonna come back to that. But let's go to uh, referring domains and look here. How many referring domains? I mean, this thing is quoted by everyone. Spotify, New York Times. Let's look at the New York Times. Let's just click here. This is the New York Times that is referenced in that one. I mean, goodness gracious. Oh, of course, it's, it's, it's blocked. I have to pay for New York Times. But nonetheless, the point is this. Listen, they did a piece of content. It's not a huge piece of content, but it has unique data. And they were able to attract tons and tons and tons of backlink. Now, remember, this is the data set we're working with. We got this off of Kaggle using Google's data search. We have tons of data. We can do way better than what they're doing. Yes, they have a domain rating of like 82, right? We don't want to go head to head with them. But how do we use this data with, what, how many countries is this? This is like 138 countries. We have to come at this problem. And the problem is how do we rank? How do we acquire backlinks from a different angle? You never want to go head to head with Mike Tyson, right? That's a bad move. You have to come from a side. You have to think of a unique strategy. Now, because we've already done the work on Iceland, we can just type in Iceland into Ahrefs. Let's go to match in terms. Let's go to include and check this out anywhere. Let's do happy. Let's do happiness. Let's do things like that. Uh, let's just try that. Let's try happy and happiness. Let's click go and see what comes up. Happy campers, Iceland. All right. So camper is a thing that we need to omit. So immediately we need to exclude camper or campers. I don't know what that means. I think it's probably a brand or something. So sometimes you need to omit things, right? So let's look down here. Iceland happiness index. All right. Saddest country in the world. Is it the saddest country in the world? Happy marriage cake, Iceland. Happy tours, Iceland. Why is Iceland so happy? These type of things are things that we can kind of go to the side and start to rank for. Because if someone's doing a project or they're doing a journal or they're doing like um, anything, like New York Times is doing a piece on Iceland, they're going to be searching for these things. Like, is Iceland a happy country? And that's where we can come into play and build this out. I'm moving along to answer Socrates. Is Iceland a happy country? Let's hit enter and see what comes up. And these 
All of these are so, so, so powerful for us. We have to sort through these, which we can do quickly by downloading that, which we'll do. But this is going to be our framework, how we structure the articles. Because we have all this data, but how should we structure it dependent upon data-driven decisions? So what are people typing in? Let's marry that. Let's meet their desire on this SERP. So let's use ChatGPT 3.5, right? I want to write an article on whether or not Iceland is a happy country. Sort through these questions and tell me which to prioritize right for my article let's see what it does let's let it run okay perfect what are the key factors to use to measure so that's going to be our that's going to be very important that's going to be at the end of the article how does iceland rank in international happiness rankings what cultural and so societal okay these are very good so let's take these Let's take these and push them to ChatGPT again. Now check this out, this is gonna blow your mind. Provide a downloadable plot that answers this. So we merely took one of the questions, how does Iceland rank in international happiness rankings, right? And it says, certainly I can do this, and I said, I don't see it. But then it said, my apology, here it is, here it is. You wanna check it out? Just look at that for a second. That's pretty gnarly, right? Let me move it to the side. So look, there it is, boom. Iceland, it looks like to be the third. ChatGPT was able to take all that data, this huge Excel spreadsheet, and give us this gnarly looking chart with like, what, 50 some other countries? That is a perfect, perfect image to go onto our website because no one else in the world presumably has this image right here, right? No one else has this. We can have perfect alt text. Now let's, let's I said, what does ladder score mean right here? Look, 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 what is ladder score? Because off to the left, it says ladder score. And it says the ladder score is a measure used in World Happiness Report to quantify the overall well-being. And check this out. The top of the ladder represents the best possible life. And at the bottom, so it says respondents are asked to place themselves on a rung. So ChatGPT has given us the book. Here's the data, ChatGPT. Give us back awesome charts. And furthermore, tell us what these charts mean. Now, I took it a step further. How does Iceland's geographical and environmental situation impact its happiness? I said, can you provide insights based upon the data? Check this out. This is this looks very similar to what Brian Dean does on his website, right? On the video, the first video, part one. Look, social su support, data insight. Iceland scores very high in social support, uh, possible connection, the sense of community, and strong social bonds. Iceland may be enhanced by its relatively small population. Like it goes on and these are bite-sized chunks. This is crazy. This is so, so useful. Now let's take it a step farther. What are some good questions people might have regarding Iceland's relative happiness that we can answer directly with data plots? In other words, I'm asking ChatGPT, look, we have data, right? What can you answer with the data and provide a plot? And geez, Louise, if it didn't give us a good answer, how does Iceland compare to other Nordic countries in happiness? Like that right there, that right there, People are asking that question. Someone's asking that question. If we can provide data, we're probably one of the only people in the world, websites in the world, that are going to provide data for that. Uh, what are key factors contributing? So it says, look, we can do a radar chart or a bar chart showing the different contributing factors such as GDP, uh, blah, 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 all these things. It gave us eight options. So let's run this. Let's see, let's see what it comes up with. Check this out. Not bad at all. It gives us a visual we can understand so quick, right? Iceland is right in the middle of the pack of other Nordic countries. Super cool. And all I asked it, I said, answer this with a bar chart, right? That's all I had to ask ChatGPT. And it does some work. I said, I don't see the chart. Can you provide a downloadable? Sometimes you have to do that. And then it gives an explanation. And then I said, give me a brief that can go on my website. And look, Iceland's happiness in Nordic context, like not bad at all. In the comparison chart, Iceland is set alongside its Nordic peers. The visual representation illustrates how Iceland's happiness ranks in context to that region. Not bad, right? This is ChatGPT doing data scientist work. Now, before we forget, look at this. We need a methodology section. If you're going to have a lot of data, you need to tell the user, how did you get this data? So I copy and pasted the Kaggle report. Check out part one, how I got this data. And it says, look, here we go. The world, what does it say? The World Happiness Report serves as a pivotal blah, blah, blah data source. The primary data for the analysis is sourced by the Gallup World Poll. Like this is perfect. This goes right smack dab in the blog article. Now, before we get there, before we post this to the blog, I need you to see this, right? We have three awesome tables. We're going to put these right in the blog. And on top of that, ChatGPT gave us some questions to consider based upon answer Socrates. Look at these. These are really good data insights based upon the data. And then the methodology, right? Here's what this is about data source. These are all configured perfectly. Nice bullet points. Look, 
what we're doing here is creating a framework that we can replicate with other countries. Iceland is one country of many. If we do a great job here, right? If you do a great job with your website and you figure out how to use data and put it in a framework that's repeatable, that's what Brian Dean has done with his website. They have three, he said about three different frameworks on his new website, Exploding Topics, and they just rinse and repeat and press into the data. Now, if you like this video, please subscribe, please like, comment, tell me what you have going on. This is gonna be a series. The next one, we're gonna push it live. We're gonna do some more keyword research. We're gonna build this out. So I appreciate you and I'll catch you on the next one.